Hi, so I have read quite a bit about biomass electricity, which is electricity made from burning fuels coming from biological sources. Now, let me tell you that I really do think that the energy transition we're going on uh, as of right now is very important and therefore should be done right the first time rather than trying to use any kind of intermediary technologies. But here's something that makes uh, biomass particularly uh, problematic in the energy transition. Because as we transition into sustainable energy, it doesn't just mean not using fossil fuels. It should mean not generating electricity or doing anything by burning fuels. Because burning fuels leads to more CO2 emissions than you might initially realise or even calculate. When you're calculating the uh, CO2 that's being burned by burning a particular fuel, all you're really calculating is how much CO2 is coming from that fuel. But there's also a lot of secondary emissions, things like transportation and also uh, processing of the fuel take a lot of energy. And that leads to more CO2 emissions for the same amount of electricity as if it were made using solar, wind or nuclear. Now there's this obvious argument to be made that biomass uh, works because it's made out of organic materials, you know, plants and uh, trees. But there are two huge problems with it. The hunger crisis uh, is the first problem that's partially caused by biomass. Uh, there are lots of other causes, but one of them is that, that certain types of plants grown for biomass uh, can actually be used as food as well. And even if they can't, one at least can actually, you know, like, grow food or even put animals on that land instead and will actually solve a food crisis rather than worsening it. Now, the other big problem is regeneration, especially for trees and large fields of plants. It will take a long time to regrow them and also a lot of effort. So it's going to take a long time before that CO2 is being reabsorbed by the plant, a time which we need right now because otherwise climate change might worsen and eventually become unstoppable. Now what about using food waste instead of actually growing plants specifically for use for biomass? Well, that waste could still be used for something, whether it's for uh, building materials, if it's wood waste, or when it is old food that's been thrown away, it could be given to poor people, again, who don't have access to food right now. And when it comes to uh, unusable, uh, anything inedible parts of a plant, they can maybe be used for animal feeding or for fertilization of ground or certain industrial processes. So in any case, it's a waste to use anything significant for biomass. But what about algae, you might ask? Well, there's another big thing about that one. Uh, algae and plants work on solar energy. Now, what's a more direct way to use solar energy? Using it to directly generate electricity. And uh, in that way, it's obviously going to be much more efficient than first turning it into a biomass and then burning that biomass. But now there's the argument to be made that algae can create a buffer for solar energy. So when it, the sun doesn't shine, you know, when it's cloudy, there's some renewable energy left. But there's a much more efficient way to do that. And it's called pumped storage hydroelectricity. It is the most common form of uh, long-term energy storage. And it revolves around two simple reservoirs filled with water. Uh, a pump and a turbine are put in between them. So when there's a shortage, you can let the water through the turbine. And when there's a surplus, you can pump the water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir. Another common potential use of biofuels are in airplanes. Now, when it comes to uh, intracontinental or European flights, we can basically <laughs> relate all the trains again, especially high-speed or sleeper trains, as they save a lot of time. And when it comes to intercontinental flights, well, just use hydrogen instead, because it's much easier to generate than growing a lot of plants and it also takes up a lot less space and only leaves one byproduct water no extra uh, chemical components are left after combustion that is unlike uh, burning any kind of uh, organic fuel uh, which will always leave behind a little bit of sulfate and uh, phosphate and other not so nice things 
So eventually you tell, well, we should stop using biomass. You know, there are other ways to generate electricity. You can use nuclear as a safe basis. Uh, and add renewables, as in direct sun and wind energy on top of that. Uh, maybe also water energy. And use uh, pump storage hydropower for long-term storage. And maybe new battery chemistry for short-term storage. Biomass will really not exist, obviously. But when it comes to fuels, it will only have a uh, position in very, very, very niche cases. Things like old timers that really should be preserved rather than converted. And this is a great way to do that. But in the mainstream, biomass fuels will probably be another footprint in the history of climate change combat. See you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends. And perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.